Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at approximate nearest neighbor and a concept called product quantizer, which is used in many ANL libraries. Also, in one of the last videos, we looked at uh, uh, approximate nearest neighbor and uh, a popular library of it called Annoy. I will add the link of that video in the description section. The way Annoy does approximate nearest neighbor and the way product quantizer does are completely different. So this video is standalone in itself and yeah, let's get started. So nearest neighbor, we know nearest neighbor is a conceptually very simple thing that uh, for a given point, we have to find all the k closest data points. And why do we uh, use nearest neighbor search or why do we do this nearest neighbor? Because whenever we are able to represent some entity in terms of vector, then we see that the entities which are close to each other come close in the vector space as well. We can see apple and banana are close and far from the boat. So proximity in the vector space means similarity. And we have already seen how Annoy does it in one of the past video which, for which I will add the link in the description section. Now how product quantizer works. Product quantizer is a type of vector quantizer. It accelerates the approximate nearest neighbor search. And the key element or topic uh, of product quantizer is the building block of uh, ANN libraries like Facebook AI Simulated Search Fires and Google Scan and libraries. These libraries are powered by product quantizer. And unlike tree based methods like Annoy, where we, it used to uh, reduce the exhaustive search to a constrained search, not looking at all the nodes but only on the fixed set of nodes, here it's different. The product quantizer still does an exhaustive search, but what it does is it compresses the data. So compress because of this compression and some approximation, it greatly simplifies both on memory as well as speed. We will look into all of that in details. And but there are ways by which the exhaustive search can be reduced to a constraint search. That also we will look at the end. Now, how the data compression happens? So data compression happens by a simple technique called clustering. The same k means clustering that we are aware of. The data set compression happens such that the number of vectors stays the same. That is the data set size stays the same. But for each data point, we have reduced the size. But the amount of storage required for each vector is reduced. So it optimizes for memory first over the compute. And two important benefits that we get out of this data set compression is memory access time reduces. So in many tasks what happens most of the time goes in lookup in the hard disk and so on. Here if the data set is already of a small size we can keep it in memory uh, or the main RAM. So same things it solves the scenario where sheet memory capacity is a problem for big data set. Now let's look at how it actually works, how it actually does the data compression. Suppose we have a data set of 50k vectors, each of 1024 components, dimensions or number. And what we do first is we chop the data set into k sub vectors, which will give us, which will divide the data set or the original matrix of 50k into 1024 numbers into 8 matrices, which are 50k into 128. So 128 because 128 into 8 is again 1024 and we have chopped into 8 parts. So the big matrix is reduced to 8 separate sub matrix of 50k into 128 size. Next what it does is it runs a k-mean clustering separately on each of the 8 matrices with k equal to 256. k equal to 256 means basically the k-means it chooses k equal to 256. So for each of the sub matrix we will have 256 uh, possible clusters. The centroids are called prototypes and they represent the most commonly occurring pattern in a sub vector. Now what we have achieved by doing all this, that is what we have achieved is the data compression. Let's see how. The cluster centroid are used to compress data set. We replace the sub space of a vector with the closest matching centroid in terms of L2 distance. This allows us to store vectors efficiently in a compressed form because we can just store the cluster ID and while calculating the distance we can do a lookup. We will we'll look at this lookup thing in more detail. So, so let's understand the data compression. So what we have done is we had a big uh, matrix initially uh, and each each vector was of 24 dimensions and for storing one of the dimension we need 32 bits so 1024 into 32 bit 4096 bit per vector was the memory need what we did we divided it into eight sub matrices so 128 into 32 bits so and uh, since they are eight 122 into 32 into eight which is 4096 bit no compression happened but because of the clustering we can replace these 128 numbers with the closest centroid, closest cluster. 
Now that closest centroid or the closest cluster is also 128, uh, uh, 128 numbers and each number is of 32 bit. But instead of storing the uh, uh, clusters centroid, instead of storing the cluster centroid, we can just store the cluster ID because we know there are two because we know there can be 256 centroids, right? There can be 256 centroid is of each of 128 numbers and each number of 32 bits. So instead of storing 128 in 32 bit, we can just store the cluster ID that uh, and to store 256 numbers that the ID we just need 8 bits 2 to the power 8 is 256. So in a way we have reduced 4096 bits. Uh, first of all 1024 numbers into 128 and 8 separate parts and each 128 numbers with just the closest centroid ID it belongs to which is a uh, 8 bit number. So we have reduced 4096 to 8 bytes which is almost 512 times we have reduced or compressed the data. So uh, now in this compressed data still it's going to be an exhaustive search that is we are going to uh, look at uh, uh, for, a, for a given query vector we will search across all the data points. Nice way will be to decompress the data set vector and calculate the L2 distance. What that means is uh, now a query vector comes we already have the query uh, we already have the uh, vector and for the um, data set we can decompress each centroid ID back to its actual 128 number actually actual centroid and then calculate that to distance but that's not needed what we can do is we can pre-compute the pairwise distance between all possible centroid IDs so let's understand that to calculate the approximate distance between a given database vector and a query vector. Query vector is the one the query has come and we have to search among the data set which are the closest uh, data points and these are the database vector. So to calculate the approximate distance between a given database vector and query vector we just use those centroid IDs to look the partial distance in the table. How? So for the query vector uh, the first 128 numbers we can we can easily know that which centroid ID it belongs to. Let, let's it let's say it belongs to the 80th uh, centroid and for the first data point the first 128 numbers belongs to cluster number 130. Now what we can do is either in the naive way we can decompress 80 centroid uh, number to its actually 128 numbers and this uh, 130th uh, centroid to its actual 128 number and calculate the L2 distance or we can just pre-compute all the possible distances of pairwise centroids that is uh, we know there can only be 256 centroids so 250 so the first vector can belong to any of the 256 centroids and second can belong to the 256 centroids so 256 into 256 that is the max number of possibilities that I can have I can pre-compute all those and keep in a lookup table and uh, we just use those centroid IDs to look up the partial distance for one of the subspace matrix or one of the subspace vector and we can do it for all the uh, matrices and sum those up. So that is what it's written. We just use those centroid IDs to look up the partial distance in the table and sum those up. This reduces the time complexity of calculating distance between two vectors from order dimension to order space. So from 1024 to 8 uh, in this case which is like 128 times faster. So in this way because of the fast lookup uh, we can reduce the uh, time complexity of the exhaustive search and also because of the data compression we have reduced the memory size as well. Now the compression technology how like why it is so useful. So this is how product quantizer works where we divide the big matrix into sub matrix and then we uh, use the clustering to compress the data and do a lookup to uh, perform a fast search. A PQ in broader sense is a compressor that reduces the number of possible values that a variable has because it does data compression. We compress a vector space into 256 centroid which are referred as code book and each centroid is called a code. With these 8 code books because we have 8 sub matrices with these 8 code books each code book has 256 uh, codes and 8 vector spaces we can combine codes to create 256 to the power 8 possible vectors. So what does it mean? It mean is if a vector how many how many possible combination of values it can take it for, for the first subspace it can take any of the 256 centroid IDs second it can take all any 250 centroid IDs to 250 to 8 possible uh, vectors are possible. Uh, 
So in effect, we have created one large book with 256 to the power 8 codes or cluster, which is a very large number. And learning and storing one single code book of that size was directly impossible. So that's the magic of product quantizer. Instead of storing one single code book, we are storing eight code books, but we are able to realize that using these eight code books and eight vector service spaces, 256 to the power 8 possible combination of vectors we can create. So this is how the magic of product quantizer and how important it is. Now, can we do better than the exhaustive search? We said in the beginning of video, it, there are ways in which we can tweak and uh, reduce the exhaustive search to constraint search. Let's look into that. So inverted file index is simply a technique of pre-filtering the data set so that we don't do have, have to do an exhaustive search. So what we do is we cluster the data set ahead of time with k-means clustering to produce large number of uh, data partitions, let's say 100 partitions. Now what will happen at query time, we will just compare the query vector to the partition centroids. There are 100 partitions and let's say we take the 10 closest partitions or clusters and we will now apply PQ technique only to the data vectors belonging to these 10 partitions. So ahead of time we have done a k-means clustering of the entire data set and for a query vector we see which are the closest 10 uh, uh, partitions and we will do a pq only on the vectors belonging to this uh, set of uh, partitions. So in this way we can reduce the uh, exhaustive search to constraint search. So that's all in this video where we looked at the concept of product quantizer and how beautifully it compresses memory and also reduces the search uh, time. I hope you liked and uh, enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. Bye.